Welcome to episode 4 of our valuation series. Today's focus is on price to book. In this episode, you will learn what book value and price to book is, what it means, how to interpret it, how to find it for any company using online research tools, and how to use it to select good investments. We will do this using both hypothetical and real world examples. Before we can understand what price to book is, we first need to know what book means. Book value refers to the value of a company's assets minus the liabilities. Let's use an example to better understand what that means. From our prior episodes, we know that Ben started a coffee shop. Ben opened his coffee shop five years ago. He put his entire savings into this company, but that wasn't enough to pay for the shop, the renovations he needed to make to the building, all the equipment and supplies to get started, advertising, and other startup costs. In addition to his savings, Ben took out a $200,000 business loan. This loan is a liability. Over the past five years, Ben paid down $100,000 of this loan and used some of his profits to further expand and improve his company. When we add up the value of his assets, we are including everything his business owns which has monetary value. His company has real estate, equipment, and supplies which, if he chose to, he could sell. The value of all of his assets is $350,000. To find his company's book value, we take his assets, $350,000, and subtract his liabilities, $100,000. Ben's Cafe's book value is $250,000. Price to book value is the price of his company divided by the book value. As you may recall from our previous episodes, Ben is charging a steep price of $500,000 for 10% of his company. This values his company at $5 million. To calculate price to book, we divide the price, $5 million, by the book value, $250,000. This gives us a price to book of 20. Although price to book varies by industry, typically a price to book ratio of 20 is very high. Let's take a look at Maggie's grocery store. Her total assets are valued at $1 million. She has no liabilities. She offered you 10% of her company for $225,000, giving her company a $2.25 million valuation. $2,250,000 divided by $1 million gives us a price to book ratio of 2.25. Why does this matter? One reason is that, for some companies, the primary drivers of profits are assets. You therefore want to get as much book value per dollar you invest as you can get. Another reason is, while we never invest in companies that we expect to fail, some companies do. If a company closes and has to sell all of its assets, the money made from those sales are divided between the shareholders. If you invested $1,000 in a company with a price to book of 10 that suddenly shut down and had to sell its assets, you can expect to only get $100 of your investment back. A 90% loss is substantial. If you had invested that $1,000 in a company with a price to book of 0.5 and it closed and sold, you might actually receive double your investment or $2,000. Thus, a lower price to book ratio gives investors a greater sense of safety when investing. You are getting more value from a company with a price to book of 1 than a price to book of 20 like Ben's Cafe. As I mentioned, profits in some industries are more heavily driven by assets. Finance is one of those industries and people often consider price to book when looking at whether to invest in a bank. Let's take a look at JP Morgan Chase & Company. This is a company with a $286 billion market cap at the time I made this video. We are looking at the statistics tab on the page for JP Morgan on Yahoo Finance right now. This page is great for organizing valuation numbers. You can see that along the side they have listed trailing PE, forward PE, the PEG ratio, and price to sales, which I explain in my other videos. If you are unfamiliar with those, please take a look at those videos. At price to book, we see that the current value is 1.29. MRQ, by the way, stands for most recent quarter. If we wanted to calculate the price to book value for ourselves, we would take the share price value, $93 at the time this video was made, and divide it by the book value per share, $76. This is about 1.22. Now you can see this is slightly different from the number Yahoo Finance gave. 
This is because Yahoo Finance has not updated this number since March 25, and today is March 30th. The great thing about knowing how to calculate this yourself is you can give yourself more updated information when websites you are looking at are inconsistent or have not been updated. Now that we know the price to book, is this a good value? 1.22 is fairly low, which gives a greater sense of safety than if it was a 5. But is this a good price to book value for JP Morgan? I like to compare this price to book both to the company's own history as well as to its competitors and the industry average. We are looking at macrotrends.net. Take a look at the sides of the page. The first chart shows us the stock price, which has progressively improved from 2007 until the present, up until the recent coronavirus crisis. The second chart shows that book value has improved consistently throughout this period, increasing from $31.19 per share up to $84.74 per share. That means the current book value increased by nearly three times during this 13-year period. That increase is something we want to see. We can also look at price to book in the third chart. It shows that the current price to book is lower now than it has been from 2017 to 2020, but it's higher than it was at any point before that on this chart. This shows it may be overvalued relative to its own history. We can also compare JP Morgan to its industry rivals. We are looking at a comparison chart on macro trends here. This is the price to book ratio of JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, and Citigroup. Of these banks, JP Morgan, shown in blue, currently has the highest price to book value of 1.72. As a quick aside, this is a comparison of their numbers from the fourth quarter of 2019, and thus these numbers have since changed. If you want to see where they are now, you would need to wait for the new quarterly reports to be released for this website to be updated, or you could look up the companies individually yourself. I will do that for you. As of March 25th, Citigroup's price to book is 0.55, Wells Fargo is 0.76, Bank of America is 0.82, and Goldman Sachs is 0.72. When we compare this to JP Morgan's price to book, which was over 1.2, we again see that this valuation metric is less favorable than its competitors. When we look at Fidelity.com's research tools, we can look at the entire banking industry. They show a price to book of 1.23. This is because their value is coming from March 27th. You always want to check dates on websites because they will be updated at different dates and times for these numbers. By contrast, the banking sector's average is less than 1 at 0.96. JP Morgan is at the 89th percentile for the sector. This means that 89% of its competitors in the banking industry have a more favorable price to book ratio. This again suggests that current price to book for JP Morgan is higher than we would like. We can also look down the page to find book value per share growth for the last five years. We see JP Morgan has increased book value by about 2% per year, whereas the bank average is almost 4.5%. JP Morgan is only at the 12th percentile for growing the book value. Let's talk a bit about the pros and cons for using price to book. It is important to point out that price to book will differ significantly between industries and sectors. Service-based companies may have little need for assets when compared to product-based companies. A car manufacturing company, utility, bank, or pipeline company will likely have a large amount of assets and will need these to be profitable and grow. A company focused on cloud-based computing, AI, or web-based consultation may also generate billions, yet only with a fraction of the asset value. Take a look at this chart which compares price to book across industry. Industries like consumer discretionary and information technology average close to a price to book of 8, whereas others like energy, financials, and materials, all asset heavy, are less than 2. Utilities which are also asset heavy are just over 2. This is another reason we want to ensure we are using appropriate metrics for the companies we value. Price to earnings is not effective for valuing all companies, just like price to book is not appropriate for all. Microsoft's price to book has not been below a 2 at any time in the past 15 years and is currently at a 10. Amazon has had a 15 price to book and has rarely been below a 10. 
Apple is at a 12 and rarely goes below a 3. Yet it would be hard to argue those would have been terrible investments over the last 15 years. I will also mention that for some sectors, some investors prefer to examine enterprise value divided by invested capital instead of price to book. If you would like more information about that ratio, let me know in the comments below. A con for using price to book is that price to book ratios can be influenced by accounting rules. For example, if a company's assets are overstated, this ratio will be distorted. The company's assets may not be as valuable as they report. It is also possible that, if the company did dissolve, the company would sell the assets for less than what they're worth and you would not get as much money as you were expecting. Further, if the company does poorly but does not fail, the company's price to book ratio could drop well below one and stay there for many years. Thus, there is no guarantee that you will not lose money on a company with a price to book ratio of one. Despite these cons, Barclays backtesting found that stocks with a low price to book outperformed stocks with a high price to book by 7% annualized over a period of 10 years. Stocks with a low price to book ratio also returned 2.7% more than the market over the same period. Price to book ratio screens might identify companies with a low return on equity. Some companies may have a low price to book because they don't generate returns. To avoid this, you can ensure you invest in companies with a low price to book with a high return on equity. Barclays found that combining a low price to book ratio with a high return on equity filter resulted in excess annualized returns of 32.6% over the high price to book ratio and the low return on equity screen, and it had a 13.6% outperformance against the market. An additional complement to the price to book screen is dividend yield. Barclays analysts added high dividend yield to the pr low price to book and high return on equity screen. Backtests showed that this screen outperformed the market by 19.5% over the 10 year period. In conclusion, price to book is important and will add value to your investment decisions. However, you should never consider it in isolation or without consideration of other factors and variables. If you found this video helpful or believe it'll help others, please like and subscribe. This will help the YouTube algorithm get this video out to more people who are interested. If you have questions or information you would like to share, please write a comment below and share it with the community. As always, good luck with your investing.